Hi people, so in my In This Lobby video, I referenced the bikini at all when talking about, I forget which section it was in, but it, I think I was talking about American atrocities as I uh, always do. So if you remember, you remember. But with the bikini at all always has brought up questions for me. Not because I don't like know about it because I was taught about it in high school, which in the video I was like, I don't think other people were taught about it, but because bikini sounds very close to another place you may know. Bikini bottom? Now this sounds like really, really silly. Okay, really silly idea. But is bikini bottom referencing the bikini at all is spongebob talking about nuclear colonialism and the nukes testing that america did on the island is spongebob woke we will be investigating all of that today but before we do subscribe i also have tiktok instagram patreon website Follow it all, please, or I will come for you. So do it. So this seems like super silly. I think this is gonna be a silly video. It, this is gonna seem like a silly video, I should say, but it's really not, okay? Cause like I said, a lot of people do not know about these atrocities that took place on this island. And I think SpongeBob might be secretly weaving it into children's minds without them even knowing it right you know maybe a little bit of conspiracy time <laughs> no <laughs> i don't know but it's a conspiracy but there have been on places like reddit and online forums people have also connected these thoughts and been like trying trying to find if bikini bottom and spongebob and the creators of spongebob maybe have also referenced the bikini atoll and what took place there are several theories that are used on these forums number one there is the correlation that a lot of the people in spongebob wear like 1940s style bikinis and clothing and so they they've kind of connected the thought that thoughts that maybe their spongebob is set in like the 40 60 somewhere around there where they would have had these types, these styles of clothing. And so that could also be connecting it back to World War II, the Bikini Atoll, things of that nature. There's also the Dying for Pie episode. I believe like uh, SpongeBob like keeps tripping with a pie or something. I don't remember. I believe he trips with a pie at the end when he tries to give to Squidward, I believe. And then it explodes and they show an explosion that is very similar to one of the most famous ones on the bikini atoll it's the mushroom cloud looks pretty much identical so once again are the creators of spongebob aware of this connection just beyond the name there's also the rock bottom city which honestly probably one of the most goaded episodes of spongebob ever he misses like his bus stop ends up going down to like this crater area where just some weird stuff happens there's some it's it's a real fun episode that spongebob fans will know and love but there is a uh, also a famous crater that was created from nukes testing in the bikini atoll and so a lot of people are like is rock bottom supposed to be a crater is it referencing the bravo crater from the marshall islands so there's a lot of things within spongebob there's probably other things you could point to as well if you comb through the what is it like 20 seasons that spongebob is on i guarantee you especially in the earlier seasons you're gonna find maybe not so much now in the more newer stuff but back then i bet you're gonna find probably a good amount of evidence to suggest that the creators of spongebob are aware um, of this and made a conscious choice to include these elements. There's also the like other theories that suggest that SpongeBob was created by like radiation 
and that that's why he's a talking sponge and that's why like all everyone else in Bikini Bottom can talk is because of the radiation in the water, I guess. Also, that sponge could be a symbolism for like climate change and uh, waste in the ocean because Spongebob doesn't look like an actual sea sponge. He looks like like a dish sponge. So there's lots of different theories regarding Spongebob that you could also connect back to the Bikini Atoll. So lots of interesting stuff happening regarding that uh, that you should definitely look into a little bit further on places like reddit it's real fun it's real fun nothing to be taken seriously do i think spongebob is socialist is it uh, anarchist is it yeah. no <laughs> i don't think that i don't necessarily think they're pushing a certain political ideology but it is really fun and really cool to see them wear of this kind of unheard of thing in American history that I guarantee you a lot of people are that will especially watch this video that are especially in America do not know about but it's it's a disservice that we're doing to these people that are originally from this island by not teaching this history by ignoring it and pretending as if it doesn't exist which isn't even necessarily American citizens faults but the people that were have the who did this and have the due diligence to at least like not hide it like that's real sketchy you know not surprising but sketchy because this wasn't just like a nukes testing they didn't just go in drop bombs and then leave and everything was fine there's occupation in this there's displacement there's real harm that was done not only to the environment but to the people that were originally there it's just so disgusting whenever you learn about it when i was in high school and i was taught about this we watched a whole a documentary about the people that live there and how it affected the island and it kind of weaved into like climate change and then also weaved into obviously what america did it's just disgusting, bro. It's just disgusting. There were 67 nuclear tests beginning in the beginnings of the Cold War. The test took place from 1946 to 1958. And historically, a lot of important, I guess, things happened on the Marshall Islands. The first hydrogen bomb in 1952 was dropped there. Um, I believe also the first hydrogen bomb to be dropped in the water also was there and these bombs were an equivalent to 7,000 times the force of the hiroshima bomb which is insane of course this is coming on the heels of the arms race the cold war like i said and trying to prepare just in case something is to happen especially after world war ii spread of communism blah 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 whatever the frick america thought was gonna happen that never happened whatever the cold war oh my god I, there's so many things to talk about in this world there's so many messed up things but the cold war is something that deserves a whole video essay girl honestly i, I should make one on that. that that's a whole other thing okay but nuclear colonialism is actually a topic that i learned from SZA. <laughs> i have a video on this very channel where i was praising my lord and savior SZA. <laughs> I love her so much. I love her. She's an icon. Her last album was not that good. Not my fave, especially after Control. But um, yeah, um, you should, in that video, uh, she talks about nuclear colonialism. I don't remember why, but I was like, I didn't even know that was a thing. What is this? Nuclear colonialism is a system of domination through which governments and corporations disproportionately target, devastate indigenous peoples and their lands to maintain the nuclear production process. I really doubt that the Bikini Atoll is the only um, example of this. I'm sure in Maine, like the contiguous in the United States, I'm sorry, sure there's also other examples, like probably pointing, you could point to like New Mexico because I know there is nukes text news nukes testing there that also uh messed with people i don't know if the indigenous population necessarily but i know there were people like 
during the nukes testing in World War II that like got birth defects and like cancer and stuff from them doing that and not telling anyone there. Once again, insanely messed up. What the frick? Like, how are you going to do such a devastating thing and then not tell the people that live right next to the thing? You're like, what? There are two things that happen whenever this concept arises. There's the effects on the wildlife and there's also the effects on the people, which are both insanely important, especially as we live in a world right now where climate change is like a huge thing. Also, another thing that should be a video. We're already barreling towards like our world dying. And then you have this, which just completely destroyed a whole island. On March 7th, 1946, the 167 Bikinians living on the atoll placed flowers on their ancestors' graves, bade them farewell, and left their homeland for good. They were initially relocated to the Ron Garrick Atoll, which they believed to be inhabited by evil spirits. After much hardship, they were relocated to the Kwajalein Atoll and later to the Kili Island. On July 1st, 1946, over 42,000 U.S. military personnel and civilians on 242 naval ships, 156 planes, and with 25,000 radiation recording devices watched the first Bikini Atoll nuclear test. Back then, it was grandiosely described as a terrifying pillar of water topped by an unfolding blossom of mist and radioactive debris. About 5,400 experimental rats, goats, and pigs were brought along to study as part of the test program. The explosions also created huge craters in the coral reefs, um, more than a mile in diameter, which um, if you know about the bleaching of the coral reefs, of so the destruction we've done through our actions to the coral reefs, once again, this only makes situations like that worse. The hydrogen bomb decimated the three uh, three of the islands. So the Marshall Islands is made up of like thousands of islands. The Bikini Atoll itself only has about 23. So three of these islands are just completely uninhabitable, just were completely decimated by these explosions. They also studied, um, as they talked about with the rats, the goats, the pigs, they studied plants and also there was some wildlife that they discovered after these nukes testing were completely missing from the environment. That will mess up the biodiversity, that messes up other animals' food sources. It just, once again, it just messes up the situations that we're already not doing very good at. So there's also the health of the martial ease. A lot of these people are recorded to have birth defects, leukemia, thyroid, and other types of cancers because of what happened. Um, and also, you know, we're, we talk about Palestine a lot as well. So hopefully you understand by now, as I have referenced Palestine in pretty much every video since October 7th, uh, except for the Barbie one, except for one video, girl, I've talked about Palestine. So at this point, you should get that displacing indigenous people from their land is messed up. Like that, that to me is also insanely messed up. A lot of these people end up have ended up in Hawaii, have ended up in, like it said, the Keeley Islands. So I also wanted to show one video about Marshallese man and his dis um, his connection to the displacement of his family from these islands. We always tell them we are come from Marshall Island. Every time we remind them we are not people from here. They say, where? Where in Marshall Island? We don't see. As a one day, you will see. Despite this remote community having no running water, limited access to health care, and significant barriers to education, it is still better than what remains of Jonathan's home island. We cry about that because it's like now I'm crying. It's not good. He cries remembering the tragic history of his homeland. The U.S. coerced the people to move for the nuclear testing. This was their home. Oh, we need to move you because of nuclear. Get on this barge and we'll move you right back. And of course they don't. 
the land's contaminated, they're forced into a place where they can't fish, are given canned foods in an inadequate health system. You're off your land, so you can't even fend for yourself in many ways. It's not just selling their house and, okay, I'll compensate you here, I'll give you another house. They've lost their total ancestral ties to everything. So like I said, is SpongeBob taking a stance on American nuclear colonialism? Probably not. Is it a good baseline? Uh, is it a good intro into the unheard, untold stories that happened during this time? Yeah, kind of. I mean, it's interesting. It's fun. I guess that they kind of put in these little Easter eggs, kind of referencing what happened. I think it's good that they did that. It's freaking cool. But obviously the creators of Spongebob understand uh, and at least know this story and have, I don't want to say kind enough, but like well read enough, well educated enough to want to put this story in this insanely popular children's animation. Like, I think that's really cool that they did that. That's that's really sick. But like I said, is it anarchist? Is it leftist or whatever? No, and I don't think it has to be. I think, like I said, it's just cool that they did it in the first place. These are people and atrocities that are not talked about enough. Like I said, I don't think most, I want you guys to comment in the comment section if you were taught about this okay so i can get an understanding of if maybe maybe people were taught about this but when i heard the story in high school i was like there's no way there's no way that they're teaching this at other places there's just no way i think it would be viewed as niche to other americans i don't think that people would care enough people do not care about indigenous populations like even when it comes to hawaii and their sovereignty that's not talked about enough. You know, there's just so much regarding indigenous populations, even in the Pacific Ocean, even on the contiguous United States that we just like look over and don't care about. I think that their stories deserve to be told, which is why I wanted to feature that video so that you get an understanding of what this did to these people, because these are real people that were affected by these things. They're not just numbers. They're not just stories and legends. They have descendants. They have children who are still feeling the brunt of these atrocities. Hopefully now you know about the what happened on the Bikini Atoll. A little bit of a, a little bit of a surface um, education on what happened. You at least know it exists, which is cool. And you can, you know, further educate yourself, further look into these stories, because like I said, they deserve to be told. So and also shout out to my Patreon people and also shout out to the commenter who was like, you should make a video on this. Shout out to all of you. OK, and I'll see you in the next one. OK, bye.